Ciao ragazzi, benvenuti al canale Spazio Gaming. In questo e nei prossimi video mostrerò il gameplay di Metaphor, Re Fantasio. Quindi se volete seguire la narrazione della storia, lo svolgersi delle missioni, dei legami, gli scontri con i boss e lo sviluppo degli archetipi, questo è il canale da seguire.
Speaking of... Alright then. The gauntlet runner arrives at the desert camp as the scorching sun sinks below the horizon and the curtain of night falls over the land. Protected within the stalwart hull of the gauntlet runner, the party gains a short, peaceful respite.
What's that about it? Oh, I see, I see. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Good morning! True. Sure. 
No kidding! All right. <laughs> I say, uh, we could stop for a break. Coming now into view is the Tree of Prophecy, a resplendent tapestry of color against the backdrop of the bleak desert. One theory is that the tree's roots gorge on the land's magla, and still another is that it gorges on those enraptured by its colorful foliage, as though themselves snared by the bewitching magla surrounding the tree. The gauntlet runner comes to a stop at its base. Certainly. Gauntlet Runner arrives in a quiet clearing, concealed by boulders, as darkness reclaims the wilderness for itself. Monsters run rampant in the wilds. To sleep here would be perilous, unless from within the safety of a Gauntlet Runner. The party, secure in their Gauntlet Runner, spends the night in peace, hidden from hungry gazes. Power of healing. Sworn oath of knighthood. With these fists, I strike for justice.
All right. Well met. <sighs> Certainly. I see. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. <gasps> Finally! We're out of the desert! Huh? Oh wow! I missed all this green! Huh? Ugh. Why is it so bumpy? That'd be the change in terrain, lad! See, you've got to let the suspensions get used to hard ground instead of soft sand! <sighs> Must be nice to fly everywhere. <laughs> what the? Did we just crash? Of course not! That's a. A cannonade! <laughs> Sanctism will reign! It's them. Remember, from the opening ceremony. I think one of them is Guido, Forden's confidant, and the other is Luis's man, Gladell. Prominent candidates. Shouldn't the king's magic petrify them for their aggression? No, see where they're aiming. They're not shooting to kill, just to take out the opposing runner's legs. Stuck out in the wilds with no working runner. Well, they survive or not, they're dashed well out of the race. So does the clash to hold each other's advance. Damned fools couldn't resist a show of force. Look, over by the legs. That crier is there too. I see. Acting as witness to the higher candidate's conflict. It seems Gladell cannot match Gladell's firepower. <sighs> What's our plan? If we just hang back and watch, Godot's gonna win. And Forden gets a leg up on the competition. Let's give Glodell a hand here. Good thinking. That way we could win Luis's regards. Agreed. Let us ride to Glodell's aid. I say, hold on! You realize you're a no-name candidate, eh? If he wants to shut you out, he'll not have to aim for just our legs. It's a runner, isn't it? If things get too dicey, we'll just run. Didn't you say we had the fastest craft around? Ah, uh, fine. Suppose there's no room for caution if we want the world's eyes on us. Okay, then it's settled. Let's make sure he owes us big. 
There should be an external runner phone out there. We're here to help with Drawblood help. Who goes there? Why do you stand for the Oasis forces? Well, um, sorry, can't get into it now. That corner. You're that commoner candidate who destroyed the Grand Cathedral. Was that not enough? You would profane the saint for the second time. So be it. In God's name, be thou punished. You dare interfere in my fight? Know your place! Is it fame you seek? You thought by confronting me, you might lift your own names? Then you chose the wrong opponent. I hate to interrupt, Oleg, but it's a touch more complex than that. We of the Crown Theocracy's monk army have silenced all who would oppose the eminence of God. Your petty ruses are beneath me. Now you shall know how powerless you truly are. Remember, the king's magic means we cannot move to strike Godot himself. Go for his followers first. We'll thin their numbers and turn the tide. Go, my brethren! Put the fear of God into these impious commoners! Don't forget about the petrification magic! I shall vanquish evil! Take that! I will fight with pride! Prepare yourselves. Let justice prevail. I crush you. Oh, you cling to Let's go. What could you hope to achieve? Is that all? Take this. <laughs> he knows we can't attack him. No holding back. Join with us. You'll be dust. <laughs> Let's stay calm. By this power. By the swan oak. Allies, together! Not this skill. Come! I'll destroy you! Resistance is futile! What could you hope to achieve? <laughs> Captain, they've got your defenses down! Uh, looks like we can't brute force through this one. I call upon royal power within! Be frozen! The power of I can't move! It's not working! No, you're not! Blade in hand! Peasants! Oh, shards of ice! Falkenberg turned them you. right in their weak spot! No holding back! The power of ice! So. The faithful are broken before you, yet your desperate struggling is for naught. You cannot defy the inevitable. I am immune to all your wicked harms. Oh, he gets to do whatever he wants, and we can't even get near him! <laughs> Bend the knee, and yield to the divine truth of sanctism! Now, are you prepared for the end? Ha! I think not, you rotter! What have you done to my gauntlet runner? We have nothing to lose. At the very least, I can thrash your old clunker until it's inoperable. This is a waste of my time. So be it. You'll face your divine punishment soon enough. Phew! Finally, he took the hint. Hey! Get down here! What are you playing at? Do you think I owe you now or something? I would have been fine without your meddling. Are you hurt? Of course I'm not hurt! Look, what are you after? 
Why, Gladell? Surely you can spare some manners for a crew that saved our lives? Honestly, that got a bit ugly for my liking. Well, well, well. Do my eyes deceive me? Juna the songstress in the flesh. What brings you all the way out here? A little tryst on the road, is it? Nothing so saucy. I'm afraid this cad's just my chauffeur. Now please, darling, a little privacy, or I'll have to charge for an interview. Fair enough, miss. Fair enough. Nothing you're not used to. But consider me chastened and shooed. Besides, I might have found another angle here that's just as promising. You surprised me out there, love. You bested Godot. So you're not just a pretty face. You were more help than my useless driver, at least. <sighs> Look here. However talented and famed a songstress she may be, you must remember to contain yourselves. Songstress? Wait, is she the same needy lady who sang at the opening ceremony? I. But that's... Oh, blast it all! I can't take it anymore! I'd know the suspensions anywhere. You had Caden workshop on this, eh? Yes, those are quality parts and no mistake. Luis really shells out for his own. By the crown, you can't be serious. She is Juno, the kingdom's greatest singer, the dulcet diva. Oh, this is preposterous. Surely I can't be the only one starstruck? Really? N no one else wants to shake her head? Well, then on behalf of this group, I... I suppose it falls to me. <laughs> You're an interesting little ensemble. Wait, is that a fairy? A real living one? Where did you... Hey, up there! provide a personal escort. So that's it. I thought it was strange that a candidate like Gladell got stuck playing someone's driver. But she was still the Saintist's pick for the opening ceremonies? Guess even Forden's camp has to bend to popular opinion. My humblest apologies, my lord Luis, for this travesty, especially when you had graced me with the privilege of bearing the lovely Lady Juna. <sighs> Glad to see Lady Juna's safe, at least. I could have crushed that churchman like a bug. And I would have if these insolent fools had it. I'm sure. Sorry, don't much care. It would seem you had to clean up my associate's mess. I'd like to express my gratitude, but if I might ask, who are you? We're your supporters. Hence your retaliation against Godot, then. He's also a candidate. Though his name doesn't carry any weight. One would think you commoners, but for the Lady Knight at your side? And you have a gauntlet runner. Most curious. What made you decide to enter the competition? Looks like he's more interested than we anticipated. This might be our chance, so choose your words wisely, okay? Mm. I want to help you, Count Luis. Oh? You fight in my name, you? Really now? So you thought you'd step in for a little self-promotion? We want to help anyone in need. That's what we believe in. Anyone? Most interesting. However, my immediate needs are met in terms of sword hounds. Oh, come now. Don't they have a certain charisma to them? Why? I dare say I saw them use magic without igniters. Please, I know we can help you. We want nothing more than to see your vision realized, Lord Luis. You do know what that vision is built on, don't you? 
if you would claim yourself my ally, then prove your power before all the kingdom's eyes. You can't change the world without power, after all. If you can manage that, I'll consider your proposal. See you, loves. Don't think this changes anything. Come on, Hector! It soars like a damn bird! Right then, what could have gone worse? We were lucky we managed to connect with Luis this early. No thanks to that Glodel. Even should we be accepted, he'll be no ally of ours. Well, at the very least, Luis knows our faces. All we have to do now is avoid screwing it up. He wants to see our power, does he? Then let's find Heisman, bring him to justice, and show the nation we're a force to be reckoned with. As the chirping birds return to their nests, and the darkness claims its dominion, the gauntlet runner at last arrives at its repose, a place grown thick with trees. Are the sounds from between the trees just the leaves being caressed by the wind? Or are they the whispers of the beguiling beings of the dark? The party never has to find out, for they are safe within the Gauntlet Runner. Ah! Oh, damn it! Blast! I... did you hear that? It's over! The end of the road! So ends the life of the genius engineer. What say we go check on him? Oh. Hey, Nurse, you okay? Oh, you too. Terribly sorry. It's nothing, really. Is there something troubling you? Ah. Well, I suppose you could say that. It's just the runner, you see? She's in top shape, but... I wanted to make her peerless. An absolute beauty, you know, top of her class. Something that would make even old Luis's runner look like a bally apple cart. I'd not be floundering so much if I just had a bit of spark. A spark? Yes, my girl. A spark of inspiration, a moment of epiphany, like when I saw the Lost Relic. Lost Relic? Doesn't ring a bell. Ah, yes, context. Uh, they say that long, long ago, there was a civilization so highly advanced it was beyond all modern understanding. Automation ruled the day. People lived surrounded by machinery with no need to work. Legend has it that they lived lives of convenience and comfort, but somehow that civilization just up and disappeared. God only knows what happened to them. Sounds kind of far-fetched already. Hear me out, would you? The point is, once in a stretch, you hear about someone unearthing relics from those days of yore. Absolutely inscrutable to the layman, don't you know? But those in the know would recognize such a prize at a single glance. Have you ever seen one of these yourself? Oh, yes. When I was but a young sprocklet, there was this loony old inventor in my neighborhood, both quite brilliant and quite daffy, as they often are. That old fellow only showed me his find once, but even seeing it lit a fire in me, like being struck by lightning. After that, it was like a boiling pot. Ideas, ideas, ideas rising to the surface. And my tinkering always came out marvelous. Some proper court engineer worthy genius. Something about it utterly captured my imagination. The, the, the lost relic, I mean. Wow. Uh, you could try getting him to show you again. If only I could. That old fellow went back to his own hometown. That single solitary glimpse of the past was all I had. The old goat. He told me he'd leave me the relic in his will. Okay, so where's this guy's hometown? 
Oh, some tiny hamlet somewhere on the outskirts of Martira. A village by the name of Kumiro or some such. This one's important. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Departing the capital and barreling southward, the party's gauntlet runner at last arrives in the old castle town, Artira, where their client Barden awaits. The towering castle's stark walls stare down coldly upon its visitors. The only question now is whether or not this gambit was the right move. more desolate a place than I'd heard. Not many people out. It's like everyone's afraid of something. Ah, you're here! I've been hoping you'd show up soon. I know it's been a while, but we pledged to help you. We'll not go back on our word. Glad to hear it. I'm sure Lady Joanna will also be pleased. Oh, your pardon. Lady Joanna rules this city. She's also a most holy sanctuary of the Sanctus Church. She lives there, in Kriganti Castle. I take it the locals are hoping for His Eminence Forden to win the tournament? Aye, naturally. No sane and righteous man would want Luis on the throne. Speaking of, I heard there was a scuffle on the road between two candidates' gauntlet runners. The criers say Forden's ally suffered the worst of it. Ah, well, that's Luis's camp for you. I assume it was them, I mean. Some nasty characters at his heel, eh? But surely all fights have casualties. Hmm. I suppose. There is truth in that. Hey, read the room, will ya? Captain, are you sure we can trust these strangers? These Bernie boarders are always in it just for the money. Looks like his officer's not on our side just yet. Denny be rude, Morris. They've come a long way for our sakes. <sighs> now, I'm sure you must be knackered from the journey. Let me show you to an inn. You can try our local speciality, perhaps. You've a local delicacy. It would be a welcome treat. You chaps go on. The old girl needs a bit of maintenance after carrying us so far. Can't that wait until you've eaten? Uh, too much at stake, lad. Go on. Don't worry, and I'll sort her out. Ah, might well fix the Bally Waterworks while I'm at it. Come, everyone. This way. Is this some kind of smoked dish? Roasted larvae of the giant sandworm. It's Martira's culinary speciality. Cooked to a delicate finish, just enough to preserve all the natural juices and flavors of the innards. Oh good, larval innards. It's a unique texture, to be sure, but the taste is divine. Exquisite. You're completely serious, aren't you? Something the matter. Do try some of your own before it gets cold. Huh. 
Uh, it looks great. Come now, they're offering us fine hospitality. It is only right that we graciously savor it. Yes, absolutely right. I'll be cheering you on. And uh, I'll see to the funeral plans. Are you actually enjoying that? How was it? Sometimes the insides can twitch a bit, but it's harmless, I assure you. Word that I had time to try more of your dishes, but... to business. Can you fill us in on the details of all these kidnappings? Aye. Our wee ones have been going missing for at least six months. All told, we're looking at 15 children now, unaccounted for. And do you think this Heisme is your culprit? I'm told he's a disgraced knight with nowhere else to turn. We've no proof, but the pieces fit. Seems to me that with nothing else to lose, he's gone rogue. For a man who claimed a knight's honor to stoop to such horrors. Tis unacceptable. We must end this quickly, for our sake and his own. If I recall the brief, it'll be quite a feat to even get near this Heisme. His hideout was in the midst of the Sandworm's territory, yes? Aye, well remembered. He certainly isn't going to make this easy for us. So... Is Heisme's hideout way out here? Looks pretty far from Martira. <laughs> And there- There's a runner. Let's see here. It's your call. Now that you mention it, I have to wonder how we can even survive out there. We've been chasing any lead we have, but we can't figure it all out. We're in over our heads. We'll get this job done. We're awful grateful to have you. And don't worry, we'll pay you what you're due. After all, nobody else in the royal capital would give it a second glance. We help anyone in need. That's why we've come this far. Inspiring words, young man. Now, I hope you're not full yet. We've a whole spread of other dishes for you. Now this, this is the pride of the town. A fine sweetmeat made from the juvenile sandworm's entrails. You'll find this tastes as sweet as any dessert. Together, I'm sure we can find a way to the stronghold without falling prey to those worms. Now, please, dig it. It is altogether different from the roast. Why, it is succulent as a mellow fruit. Another marvel. You must have gotten used to eating anything you had to out in the wild, eh? I'll schedule a meeting with the Honorable Lady Joanna tomorrow. Please, rest your weary heads for today. If they aren't here con a free meal out of us, that is. Now, let's go. It's been a while. Exactly! Pleasure to see you. Got a moment? Oh. 
Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous out! Uh, hold on. Let's hurry! I present Lady Joanna, Sanctuaris and the ruler of this city. These are the ones who have undertaken the request to subjugate Heisman. I am Joanna, presiding lady of this city. On its behalf, you have my gratitude for traveling all the way from the royal capital. Lady Joanna refused to use taxes to pay for this, so she sold her own heirlooms and possessions to secure the funds. It's clear you want only the best for your people, milady. So we'll give you our best in return. I cannot claim any nobility above yours. Even as other aspirants to the throne quarrel and bicker, you've chosen instead to help the kingdom's people. Well, well, we don't deserve that much credit. After all, we're not helping for free. Even so, please put an end to this tragedy. We won't let you down. Thank you. In truth, I thought it foolish to decide a monarch by a simple vote of popularity. But, perhaps there is something to it. Here is my offer. If you get rid of the culprit, I will appeal to the people of this town to support you. It is most kind, but can you truly afford that? Surely, as a church sent to us, His Eminence Forden would expect your support. Indeed. However, I would rather have a king who truly cares for his subjects. Yes, Lady Joanna. Now, I must return to my duties. I shall await our next meeting. We're counting on you. It was a confident smile indeed, with a great deal of pain behind it. I know it's but a step in our plan, but truly, I hope we can help these people. She even promised us political support. She did say it. Oh, I mean, I can't help but wonder if she'll keep her word on that. 
It's quite a promise to make when she barely knows us. Did something seem amiss? Not in particular. Maybe it's just the gloominess of this place getting to me. So what are we going to do about Heisme? We'll have to go out in Sandworm territory to find him, right? The mere fact of his kidnappings suggests he's passing unseen by guards and sandworms alike. The question is, how? Let's ask around the city a bit first. Though I can't say we'll find many willing to talk with the streets this deserted. Maybe we'll have better luck around the taverns and shops. We should go. Boy. My thanks to you. All good. So, hey. All right, then. All right, then. All right, then. Coffee. What is it? Right. Nice. Whew.
Oh, a scrap. I suppose we knew it wouldn't be that... It is far too early to give up. I spent over a year asking after the prince with no luck. And still I did not falter. Yes, and it's very admirable. But I think I prefer a change of tack instead. You there. Might you answer a question? Terribly sorry, but I can't help you. I'm just here on my leisure. You're better off finding the information you're looking for elsewhere. Suspicious character, isn't he? Hey, you lot. You seriously gonna hunt down Heisme? You're Barden's man. Yeah, the guy with the attitude. Not sure I should tell you this, but here I am. There's actually a way to avoid the giant sandworms. You just gotta wait for the sand flash. It's a local event. A kind of storm? And the wind kicks up sand peppered with magic crystals. Not too uncommon a sight round here. Our diviners say we'll have a sand flash in about five days. Seems to put most wild beasts to sleep. Might be some magic effect, or might just be waiting out the storm. And that includes the sandworms, eh? They'll nod off, and with proper timing, you'll sneak right past them. Heisme might well be using the same trick himself. We're much obliged, but if you know all this, why haven't you and the guard gone out? A guard unit stomping around would wake up the whole den. Didn't much like saying it, but us local lads wouldn't be much use against Heisme anyway. But you think you can handle him? Aye? <laughs> wouldn't be here otherwise. Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Can't have you getting yourself killed now. Cap's reputation's on the line. And, uh, one more thing. You didn't get this info from me. Eh? Understood. But why? You could have shared this with us at supper yesterday. What? I got myself volunteered to go out there as your travel guide? No <laughs> danger of that. I see. Anyway, I'm counting on you. Finally, a solid lead falls into our laps. And we'll not even have to bother with the sandworms. We've apparently got five days till the sand flash hits. Let's make sure we can get this done quick. Looks like more than a day's trip on the map. If it takes us one night to reach the giant sandworms territory, and we aim to go when the storm has them all asleep, we should leave in four days' time. Let's go inform Neerus. Righto, straightforward enough. Long as we get in when the worms have all tucked in for a nap, we'll be just dandy. Suppose I'd better crack on with the tune-ups then. Don't want the old girl failing on us when she'll be our only hope of egress, eh? Hmm? Oh, that! Damned if I know. It was just in the blueprints from the royal family. Works rather like an igniter, but no idea what it does. Just don't go breaking... Oh, oh is he there? You all right, lad? Thought I saw something glowing. Then you came over on giddy. Gave me a start. <sighs> Still can't believe this thing reacted. Uh, look, we don't want any nasty surprises, so I vote we stay put and rest up for today. Just in case. Don't want you passing out on me, do I? Just consider it a little precaution for the trip. Time marches on, and the age of a new king draws nearer. Your journey is going well, it seems. One by one, you take your steps forward on this road. A supernatural awakening, a call to adventure, legs to carry you. All of these are coming together. Accordingly, new powers needed for the journey seem to have awakened. Are you talking about that thing inside the Gauntlet Runner? By my eyes report, there is one piece of equipment in the Gauntlet Runner that was created in ancient times. Something no longer crafted in this day and age. A divine relic. It contains ancient magic once thought lost. The power of teleportation. With proper use, its great power will turn your Gauntlet Runner swifter than any beast or transport on land. <laughs> 
most interesting. The reasons elude me, but you seem qualified to use this divine relic. I cannot imagine this is mere coincidence. Perhaps you are guided by an unknown hand. Now, try to imagine. Vivid, familiar scenery. Somewhere far from the land where you rest. What's going on here? What's with all the yelling? Hmm? Wait, isn't this... What? The royal capital? How? We were in Martira just last night. Eurus? Surely you didn't drive us back here? Are you mad? Don't you remember how many days the last trip took? You can't dash and roll pop over to the capital in a single night. What? So this is some magic you saw in a dream? So this teleportation, it can just whisk us all back to the royal capital in a flash. Even the gauntlet runner came along for the ride. It certainly did. And there might be a reason for that. Do you know something? She was custom made for the prince. When I wasn't there in the concept phase, when they gave me an odd gadget and said, make it work, I bloody well made it work. You saw it yourself, eh, my lad? That heart all bound up in its heart. Last night, we caught it glowing. Then I wake up and find a proper hull of blue. Damnedest thing. It only started glowing when you got close, eh? Maybe you were a trigger of some kind. Yeah, maybe I am. I cannot say I've heard of teleportation, and yet... Surely there can be no explanation for this other than magic. Hold on. If we're back in the capital, that means we've got bigger problems. We're due back in Martira for the bounty. If it takes us days to get back, that's all our planning ruined. If we magicked ourselves over here, let's bally well see if we can magic ourselves back, eh? He makes it sound so easy, but... What do you think? It is no small feat we ask, I know, but might you at least try? All right, then. All right, then. Oh, dash it. Two. It reacted! The lab really is the key to triggering it! Oh, hey! Are you sure this is safe? All we can do is trust it! Martira, we really are back. I can't believe it. It feels just like when the king's magic caused that spectacle in the capital. Mm. In my eyes, it's the other way around. It's not powerful by virtue of being connected to the king or to the lad. Maybe it's that all magic is supposed to have potential of this magnitude. You've all got some powers that defy understanding too, eh? gives one the sense that those Sanctists preaching about needing igniters are wrong, or lying outright. I suppose when you say it like that. Speaking of Sanctism, I'm not like this. 
A tool full of this kind of practical, unorthodox magic is against all their teachings. Why would the royals have had it? Ah, hold a moment. With this teleportation on our side, can we travel anywhere in the world with only a thought? If that's so, we may not even need a gauntlet runner at all. What? You mean... We could just magic snap ourselves to Brylehaven? Just like that? Go on, try it out! No reaction. So we can't go somewhere we've never been before? Anywhere else you've been? How about Montario? No. Commoners don't usually visit the three great cities. It would seem this power of travel is somewhat conditional. Best that we define its boundaries now. So, in the end, the only places we can teleport to are the cities we've actually been to. Well, thank you very much! <laughs> Almost had me out of a job there, lad! Sounds like you've got to envision the destination in great detail for it to work. We'll need more than a glance out a window or a passing familiarity. And you have to focus for it too. Seems to take you a moment, which means it won't save us in a fight. Not as convenient as it sounds, huh? How so? Now, we can return to the royal capital any time we need to restock. It is useful enough as is, and the more places we travel, the more we can return to. You're right. And now, we can drop by to see Maria whenever we like. Put like that, it really is something impressive. Even if we've no idea where it comes from, it should certainly prove useful. Our next foe is a bounty, and we have a lot of preparing to do. We've got three days to go, so don't forget. right so oh my apologies you're right there that's a relief well I'll be off now hey are you sure you want to let that fellow go? He nicked something of yours just now when he bumped into you. Oh no! Grius' dagger is missing! L let's chase after him! I don't see him anywhere! Jeez, how'd he disappear so fast? Oh, 
ไอ้ผงนี่สิงเ
I'm out of ideas. <sighs> Take a look. What? Good hunting to you. Don't go get yourself killed. Yeah! Hey! Good hunting to you! Let's do it. Concludo qui il mio video. Se volete seguirmi, iscrivetemi al canale.